Welcome to S Class, the highest tier in podcasting. To my left, the guardian of the Eastern Gate is the Frozen King, the Emperor Penguin, Rob. Are you referencing something? There's an Eastern Gate and there's a Western Gate. Oh, in the movie we watched, right? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. That was good. I was like, dang, that's a really smooth intro. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right is a very special guest, guardian of the Upper West, ruler of the Concrete Jungle. It's the Brown Bear. It's Rich. Pleasure to be here, boys. Long time listener. This is like debatable. A true. <laughs> Finally getting to pod with you, legends. And I am your host, the three legged stool of this podcast. Very unstable. Just <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take to come up with that intro with all the uh, movie references? Uh, just walking the dog this morning, probably good. an hour. It's impressive. Uh, that's, that's a long Feels time. Feels like a long time, yeah. <laughs> If, if it hasn't been made abundantly clear at this point, today we are talking about Suzume no Tojimari, the newest Makoto Shinkai film. And I think we have some mixed opinions on this. I wanted to start us off with just our expectations walking into the film, and then we'll go over some of the positives, and then maybe some of the negatives. I'm, I'm going to start with Rob, because Rob has a very pensive <laughs> look on his face. <laughs> um, Going into it, I did not really know anything i only watched the one trailer once so the only thing i knew about it was that there's a girl and she wants to make out with a chair that's literally all i knew (laughs) so plot (laughs) expectations non-existent i had no idea what was going to happen expectations kind of met general yeah in that regard that's a true yes (laughs) um in terms of like quality i expected you know shikai has a lot of movies other than just your name and weathering with you but I expected this to obviously be the third quote unquote movie of Shinkai's, you know, renaissance. The third and, best or just like the third. No, like movie. among, you know, the third movie in this like renaissance of his career. And you also said third best when we were talking pre pre screening, right? I thought it would end up being the third best. Yes. Okay. Do you Rich, think how it, about you? it lived up to that? Do you think it was the third best or even, even we'll, lower? We'll, we'll get to that. Rich might that's... not be an avid listener. He doesn't know how this works. <laughs> my my pre-expectations for this yeah well unlike rob i actually didn't know about the uh the chair makeout stuff (laughs) so my my only point of reference was there were doors involved of which i was not let down there were many doors there were many doors there were a lot of doors involved things happened with these doors but i i expected it to be better than it was definitely and you you said it was going to be your number one Shinkai. I, I had it high hopes. I mean, the masses all thought it was amazing. Rotten Tomatoes for whatever the audience that's score worth. was ninety, whatever that's worth. It was good. So I was like, this can't be a failure. And I think that's probably like the middle ground between you two. I said I think it's probably going to be better than Tanky, but worse than your name, in my opinion. And I think I walked in with the same expectations as you guys. Girl simping for a chair, and that expectation was met. Okay, so I guess in that regard, we were satisfied? (laughs) Yes. Why don't we jump into some of the positives, because I know that we have some feelings. So let's let's get the good stuff out. I get what you're trying to say and that you want to start positive so that everybody doesn't, like, X out of the video. But I feel like my negatives will lead into the positives, and I feel like I, I almost need to kind of start with the negatives. And I know we discussed before the video, Rob, here's how we're going to structure it. We're going to do the positives <laughs> yes, and then the I negatives. Did, I did give you an hour warning about how. And I agree to that. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. But now I had no intentions of ever doing that. And I didn't want to say that at the time. So I'm just going to start with my negatives. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so I feel like the thing with Shinkai's movies are that they leave you kind of wondering what's going to happen as it's going along. And I feel like I'm in the sense of what is happening and why. And then even when it ends, I'm kind of like, okay, I still don't really know what happened. This one, I really followed too easily. And I feel like there were the story beats kind of never deviated from exactly what it started as. The whole movie was essentially follow cat to door, close door, follow cat to door, close door, follow cat to door, close door, <laughs> follow cat to door, close door, <laughs> go in a car ride with cat to final door, go inside of door, close door. That was the movie. I mean, if you want to break it down that simply. But you can't, that's the thing. You can't really break down your name and weathering with you so simply. They don't have those predictable story beats. And in between those door closings, you have nice slice of life sections, which I really enjoyed. 
But even then, it was that formula throughout the movie. Yeah. It, it was a very formulaic movie. I almost felt like if you were to put Shinkai's movies from the past into an AI, this is the movie that would pop out. It was just Shinkai almost to a fault. But at the same time, that's almost to a positive because I do enjoy his movies. So on the one hand, it was overly predictable and very much a Shinkai movie. But on the other hand, I do like Shinkai movies. So I obviously enjoyed sitting there and watching it. Interesting. I'm processing what you're saying. Rich, do you have any thoughts? I, I think Rob nailed it. I think it is exactly like he said. It was very formulaic. It didn't really have that sense of bewilderment and like mystery that mm-hmm. the other ones have. Like definitely like from a visual perspective, it was very cool and beautiful and different. Like all his movies are. But with the plot, it just wasn't, it didn't have all the twists and turns and just the emotional ups and downs to the level that his previous two had. And I think when you compare it to the previous two, it maybe does this movie an injustice. You won't enjoy mm. it as much if you think you are going to see like a uh, Your Name or Weathering With You. But it, it was more of a popcorn flick. Like you watch it, you see some beautiful animation. There's a pretty bare bones story, which is enjoyable. Like the slice of life moments are nice. Like Rob said, there's humor, more humor than the previous movies. And if you just like enjoy it for what it is and don't expect it to be anything else, then I think you you might like it more than we ended up liking it. You sound pretty down bad on this movie, Rich. <laughs> um, I, it was yeah, <laughs> different. I, I think I did write down formulaic when I was processing my thoughts about this. The formula I had was not like the door, door, door. It was more like boy and girl have a fun adventure. Something bad happens to the girl. In this case, something bad happens to the boy. Girl saves boy. <laughs> Love conquers all. <laughs> Which is literally all three of the movies, if you think about it, except just a gender switch. <laughs> Okay, can I True. touch on that for a second, too, about sure. why that's a problem, though? Because I'm going to go back even further to uh, Garden of Words, which is you have boy simping for a teacher. That's your love story, right? Okay. So it's it's boy tries to do teacher. Then you have your name. <laughs> boy tries to bang time traveler. Then you have weathering with you. Boy tries to bang the concept of weather. And then you have this where it's girl wants to bang chair. And it almost feels like a regression. Because we start with a teacher, which is kind of normal. Then we start with a time traveler, which is pretty sci-fi, kind of normal. Concept of weather, that's really out there. And now we're just going back down to chair. So I I feel like we've almost regressed in terms of the romantic twist. I was actually telling Rich as soon as we got in the car, I said all of this could have been prevented if Suzume wasn't acting so unwise. Like if, <laughs> if, if, uh, if Sota, I think is his name, yes. if he wasn't such a beautiful man. Um, like, let's say he looked like, I'll bleep that out. Like, she wouldn't have invited him back to her house to fix him up. Wouldn't have ever went to the Guardian thing and followed him back. The mm-hmm. doors were all been closed. Sota would never be a chair. No movie. That's a very good That's point. True. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. She couldn't hide her thirst. She's just a horny 16-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. And how ridiculous is that? Literally a strange man riding a bicycle up a hill, and you decide to stalk him. But you know what? To some abandoned town yeah, he, where like, only she's the one there. Yeah, your only interaction with him stranger. is, hey, do you know any ruins? And she's like, oh my god, I love <laughs> <Right>. him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Gotta give her credit. She's shooting her shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More yeah, confidence true. than I've ever had. Uh, <laughs> and look what that led to. Some earthquakes. Maybe things are different in Japan, too. Like, in America, in New York, you would never do that because that's just asking to get killed. That's but maybe in Japan, they true. feel more safe. Good point. Very good point. Like, Richard. I can stalk this boy and into an abandoned town, and I will be fine. I think the safety aspect is there in Japan, but I don't think that they... Given the reproduction rates in Japan, this is like further pushing the concept. We shouldn't talk to strangers. You are absolutely right, Justin, though. I I feel like this is also a product of Reiwa era Japan, where they're really trying to like make people love each other and make people want. (laughs) Like you have a girl that's That's like told like seven different times that she will die and not be able to come back if she goes into the other world. And she's like, no, we'll be fine. We're good. And then she's (laughs) good. And then they get out of it. That's a good point. I was not expecting us to go down this route so quickly this is kind of like my closing <laughs> remarks you know i gotta reverse reverse engineer my statement the the one thing that both of you said that i might disagree with is that it was really clear cut because i actually had about five or six questions and honestly i think they might be plot holes maybe what are your questions 
Yeah. Because if you Rich know, and I, I can mean, answer them, then it's just that you're stupid. I mean, that's a given. <laughs> so that's independent of my five questions. Um, also, I think that maybe they're not necessarily plot holes. Also, they might be just like this movie needs a prequel or something or some sort of backstory because this world does exist. If I may, Justin, it does have a backstory. It was made abundantly clear that this is, you know, all these ruins and everything is from the 2011 tsunami. Right. They also have an earthquake from like uh, 1920s, like a huge Kanto earthquake. So I understand that. But I know Suzume's story is from the tsunami. Oh, mm-hmm. right. Yep. Her town, yeah. Well, here, here is my stuff that I, I was at least curious about. And there are some things that was Paul. So the things I was curious about, how does Grandpa know the black cat? And why is he so friendly with it? Uh, are there other closers? Like, okay, so Sota sacrifices himself to stop the earthworm thing. But then, like, is he the final closer? Like, why aren't there other closers closing doors? Because it seems like he doesn't have parents or siblings, from my impression. No one's helping him when he turns into a chair. Uh, so if the next earthworm thing starts breaking out, who's going to stop it? Dying grandpa? Or are we all just fucked? That kind of felt like a gap. And then the the plot holes were like, what happened to the chair's fourth leg? I felt like that was a plot point that oh, that's was something point. repeated over time. Like, oh, no, no, we lost a leg somehow, but never gets brought up again. Not that big of a deal, but it felt unnecessary for them to bring it up. Why does the cat want to be Suzume's pet? And why is he such an asshole? And then why does the black cat possess the ant and make her kind of crazy like that felt like that was a good emotional beat like she has all this pent up tension that she's been wanting to get out but like why does this god give a shit about that and possess her uh unnecessary to the story i'll start with your last point with the cat i don't think the cat possessed her i think the cat being in her presence uh, um made her more vulnerable and had her say feelings that she's felt you know, throughout her life at one time or another, but not necessarily something she's constantly feeling. So I don't think it was necessarily that she was possessed and made to say something like mean and angry that she didn't actually mean. I think she meant those things or felt yeah. those things, but she not in the moment really truly felt them. She was just the cat, like in her presence, like, yeah, mm-hmm. that dark energy it. that allo- allowed her to say those things. Uh, I, I, it was I can weird see that. because the cats weren't even really evil. No, the like, cats were not. They were just yeah. They were they were actually like the the guardians of the eastern western. They're just gate, like chaos right? in a way. Right. They're, I mean, they're they're just like all powerful. I guess whimsical gods. Like yeah, they, they really weren't clearly all just good and all just bad. They like had fun and they kind of messed with humans, but like they had an overarching goal, which was. I, I guess they wanted the gates close themselves, too. Yeah, and I think there's something with the cats. There's, like, a yin-yang aspect to them because, mm-hmm. like, they're black and white, and then when they transform, they turn the opposite color. So there's some sort right. of balance thing going on, but I wasn't able to read too much into it. But yeah. what you said makes sense, Rob. Well, right, with the ant. And then in the matter of why the white cat, you know, did what it did, I think it was just shown empathy by Suzume and found somebody else that could do its job and you know, just wanted to be loved. I think that was all there really was to it. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Like, she freed him, so she wanted to be the Suzume's pet, but it felt like Suzume was special to the cat. I guess Suzume right. was special to the cat. Well, the, the, yeah, because Suzume was probably the first person in centuries to allow for the opportunity to be freed and loved. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like we were pushed to feel empathy towards the cat, especially towards the end. And then she's just like, yeah, fuck this cat. I like I like Sota more. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, maybe that's that's fine. But I don't know, I just felt conflicted about it. Like, why are you building up all of this? We hate the cat, we like the cat. And then the cat also had really bad communication issues. The cat oh, could have... terrible communication. Yeah, Rich, why don't you say this point? Right, like, why didn't the cat just say, hey, man, these are doors that are opening all around Japan, and they're going to be earthquakes. Like, I'll just bring you there. <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> Right? I mean, there's no reason not to communicate that. Could have saved everyone so much trouble. If we had so the cat being vocal like that, and we had the glasses friend from the start, the movie would have been so much easier. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, it would have been so simple. No problem at all. Glasses Coon. Glasses Coon was MVP of this movie. He's, yeah, he's class. He's he and was. I think going back to the other point is, I think I would like some more of the lore, like the grandpa's history with the black cat. Like Those might be his family members, is what I was thinking, or people that he knows very closely, because they're That's, probably yeah. possibly... They are keystones. Closer, so, similar to what yeah. happened to the grandson. Mm-hmm. Another simple explanation could be that the grandfather had this type of experience with the black cat when he was young. You know, the experience that Sota's going through currently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Right. I think I think we're just further confirming my incompetence. 
So <laughs> yeah, your I'll lack take. of critical thinking. What was your other yeah. issue? The three legs? It wasn't really the four, three legs, yeah. I had no problem with that. I thought it was just to show, you know, the destruction these tsunamis and earthquakes caused was that, like, you know, you're clinging to imperfect things because that's all you have left. I thought it was just so that they could make funny walking animations with a chair. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take it, take it if you want. Purpose. Yeah. Yeah. My final, I don't know if it's a negative point, but I just felt I need to bring this up. That worm was very phallic. It made me <laughs> slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> Maybe another Japanese thing. Subtly <laughs> incepting phallic symbols to get people thinking. And I will say, Justin, that actually had me thinking about something else is that the this movie felt more inspired by Ghibli than any other Shinkai movie. It felt very that, Mononoke, right? Yeah, just like the art of the, the worm, like you said. There were several Studio Ghibli references. And that honestly leads into another one of my biggest issues is my favorite song in this movie was when Glasses Kun was singing the intro song <laughs> from Kiki's Delivery Service. For a movie that was being marketed as yet another Radwims movie, I felt like there was a severe lack of Radwims. And my favorite song should not be the Kiki song from the 80s. I was thinking that as well, but I also thought of that as a positive point because it didn't, it felt different in the first half because there was maybe one or two Rad Wimps like music drops, but they happened like later in the movie, I felt. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like it's kind of taking a different direction, um, which I appreciated. No, that's fair. I, I, I'll give you that. Rich, thoughts on music or you're good there? I think the music, was, it was solid. It didn't like blow you out of the water, but it seemed like just the same level as your name, Weathering With You. I don't oh, know God, what? No, that's no. so wrong. Those movies have so. two of the most iconic soundtracks like your in any anime history. Yeah. Yes, your name especially. Ooh, I can't remember a single oh, song my God. That's from either of them. That is an absolutely <laughs> wild hot take. <laughs> I mean, Naruto, I know every single song. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, Naruto is iconic, too, the, the music there, but... Those were such good soundtracks, but this is this is coming from the kid who thinks your name is trash. I mean, the soundtrack was good. <laughs> you just said you don't remember a single song. <laughs> it was good. That's, that's I don't. Insane. I can't name, but I know it was good. Like just this movie, it was good. I didn't think like, wow, it's totally devoid of good music. I mean, I feel like most of the music did come from Glasses Coon when he was singing. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last song, basically at the very end of the movie, that was the soundtrack. It was Glasses Coon, and then the credits. Yeah. Have we gotten all the questioning and negativity <laughs> out of the way? Is there anything else since we flipped this on its head? The negatives? So I will also say um, I felt like he really, really wanted us to feel like the ending was this big twist where that the time loop of Suzume meeting Suzume as a child. But like, I feel like that was kind of clear from the start, at least in my opinion, that it would be just like Suzume found Suzume. Like it was very obvious she was in like a door. Uh, if not, if they didn't actually make that clear that that was the case. So it, it didn't come as this big shock twist when, you know, she was the one that gave her her chair back. And like, that's who she met in the past. That that really didn't do anything for me. I was surprised by it, but it also didn't do anything for me. Like, I, not, I don't want to say surprised. Like, I was like, oh, okay. But it didn't have any emotional beat for me. And on that note, I do have one last negative that I forgot. I thought it was a little too on the nose with the final like lecturing to her younger Message. self. Yeah. I, I think oh, like, yeah. one of the big things of the movie is like coming to terms with the past, like bad things happen and you have to like get over that trauma. But she like literally just like lectures her younger self for like a good two minutes. And I was like, this is really not subtle. Yeah, I almost felt like on the other hand that this movie sent a bad message. I felt like she was literally telling her, you'll be able to close the door on that sadness and sorrow and you'll you'll just move on. And it's like, no, that's not really how it works. People live with, you know, you're going to live with grief for the rest of your life and that's okay. You need to learn how to live with it and how to embrace it. Like, I, 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 I almost felt I was like, picking up. I, I felt the opposite. I felt like she was being very clear, like, you're closing the door on this. You're going to move on. Like, one day you'll be fine. You'll meet a really hot Japanese <laughs> college guy. And chair. even if he turns into a chair, you'll still want to do him. And, and you'll forget about your mom. It's okay. And you will. You will do him. <laughs> and then she did. I mean, that's kind of a good point. Like, it was throughout the movie, too, when, like, she, him and her, like, heard the voices of the people, like, in the disaster-stricken areas. Like, right before closing the door, they hear the voices, and then she's like, all right, I'm closing the door. <laughs> We're done. And then I'm locking it. All right. <laughs> See I was you guys thinking, later. I was thinking more like you, you appreciate the good memories, but life does go on. That's the way I was seeing it. Not necessarily, like, you throw it away. 
but more like you're, you're coming to terms with it is the way I interpreted it. You, you're right. And I, I might be wrong on it. It just, it felt like to me, it was just saying like, get over it. Like you need to move <laughs> on. That, that's, that's just like how it felt sure. like it was being portrayed. Maybe it's because it wasn't as well written enough as it needed to be. But like, yeah. to me, it, it just, mm-hmm. it kind of felt like saying you need to move on. And right. you will That's how it was on. shown in the movie. It right. was just shown that way with the door closing and you're locking it. And then right. you're, you're just going on to the next. Your whole metaphor is that you're closing the door on this chapter of your life, essentially. Right. But that's that just didn't feel realistic. And I, I get what you're mm-hmm. saying, Justin. I think that probably was the meaning and I might have taken it, it wrong. But well. that is right. how I comprehended it. That's fair. And that, that might just be either your incompetence or just like the <laughs> delivery wasn't as strong. And honestly, I think it's the latter. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we've spewed enough negativity at this film but is there any positive left in either of you because i have a couple of things that i really enjoyed about this movie glasses coon absolute mvp highlight <laughs> mvp yeah rich <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i enjoyed the humor in this one i think there was more like comedic moments relative to the others and it was like nice to have the more slice of lifey stuff in this but yeah i, I really enjoyed the downtime yeah. in the movie Mm -hmm. the chair animations were humorous like i don't know just the shenanigans with the chair was a nice injection of humor yeah i think to add on to both of your points the first one being i guess the humor like i think it's easily shinkai's funniest film and it does a good job of mixing like that Mm -hmm. physical comedy like every time she's trying to like hide the chair uh was hilarious or every time like sota fell over like when he just got right. unconscious <laughs> yeah um i think we all audibly laughed out loud in the theater like multiple times which i don't think i felt during tenki or your name mm-hmm. which was kind of like a different change of pace which i really appreciated and then the second thing was i felt like it was just like a really fun and adventurous movie i think the first half of this movie is probably the most fun out of the three and maybe that's a hot take like i'll take them running around meeting the the cabaret club lady and playing with the kids and the tangerine girl at that inn. Like that was really an enjoyable adventure for me. And even stronger than like the shenanigans in your name where they're like living each other's lives or the, the weathering with you where they're, they're getting paid to make rain places. Like those are both really great too, but I thought this was probably the best out of those three um, in that experience. No, it it was, it was fun, which is a good thing. And I, I did enjoy it. I never felt bored. I think it's just when we go into a Shinkai movie, we were expecting to be like titillated and have our minds like run in and move in. And I didn't feel like I really needed to think too much, which isn't a bad thing. But, you know, it was a fun movie. I I think it's just I had different expectations. And that's why we had so many negative things to say. But Mm -hmm. if I was just going into this being like, hey, this new anime movie came out and it's really fun. Like, go check it out. We're like, this is an awesome movie. I really love that. Yeah, I think that's what makes your name really special to me because it's like there was zero expectations. Um, so it's like going from zero to 100. And then like even if Weathering With You was a better movie than your name, it's like 100 to 110. So it's like the difference isn't felt as strongly. And then this one, obviously, we've, we've said enough about that, that it didn't really feel like it improved that much over the previous two. I mean, it literally had the same Congrats. exact ending as your yeah. name with the, the two of them walking by each other. Except they got the photo montage this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, the one last thing I will say is, that I really liked about this was I thought this had the strongest supporting cast out of all three movies. Absolutely. Actually, I was thinking about that last night, and I, I can't believe I forgot to say that. This did have an awesome supporting class. Like, Glasses Coon is by far the best character in any Shinkai movie. <laughs> Mic drop. Also, uh, the simping guy who loves the ant. Oh, that was oh, he was funny. Yeah, yeah. Was a great addition. Like he's yeah. he looks like he's blushing, but he's just sunburnt. That was uh, yeah. It did have a great supporting cast. Yeah, and the cabaret lady, like the cabaret lady and the um the tangerine girl, like they were just like lovely and charming mm-hmm. characters that didn't feel like they were just uh, shoehorned in. Shoehorned in. That's the right mm-hmm. word. They felt like they had like their whole lives, and they really built a connection with Suzume during that short time they had together, which I thought was like very fun and wholesome and mm-hmm. charming. Absolutely. I think I've said just about everything I need to say about this film. Do you guys have anything else? Before positive? We dive into final Why? Positive positivity? Or negative? Um, I do have one more positivity. I, I think what Shinkai does well is he shows the realness of Japan and he doesn't care about necessarily the outside world, despite the fact that he makes a lot of money from other countries. <laughs> and, you know, the impact of that 2011 tsunami was colossal on Japan. And, 
he was very true to that, even though a lot of people wouldn't understand that impact. And, you know, I definitely think that the most emotional moment of this movie was when Suzume returned home and was digging up her diary and she, you know, found the diary. And then you see that she, she crossed out every single diary entry from after the tsunami occurred. And obviously she lost her mother. And, you know, that was a very emotional, impactful scene. And I think a lot of people probably went into this movie, not even knowing that there was this 2011 tsunami in Japan. And, Mm. you know, he didn't care about the fact that they might not know that this is a movie made for Japan. And, you know, he clearly cares about that and how that probably impacted his life as well. And I do appreciate that aspect of it. Yeah, I think he's definitely telling his Mm -hmm. story rather than trying to cater. Exactly. Yeah. Rich, any final notes from you? Because I believe in the last 20 minutes, all we've heard is, I think it was kind of funny. (laughs) The characters themselves were were very likable. I think individually like you kind of liked all of them they each had good personalities but just the relationships they had with each other that's where it kind of fell short like the interconnecting relationships how they interacted with one another like the depth of the connection wasn't as good as the previous two but like the characters themselves were fun and fine and you liked them all and you kind of like we're invested in all of them but not them together if that makes sense maybe oh that that makes sense to me they were they were really good characters individually but none of their relationships Mm -hmm. felt entirely fleshed out right exactly yeah i guess the bonds felt like a little bit weak like you know they're Mm -hmm. connected but like even like best friend kun like he's like such a good dude like he's the mvp but never really felt like he was best friends with sota except from the actions that he performed but like they never have a moment Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, that's Zuma a good point. gets very little time with Chair Coon. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she's just simping. Yeah. Yeah. All Honestly, right. the, the most connection was probably the ant in, in Glasses Coon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that was the most That's actually out. a really good point, Rich. Right? I did feel some chemistry there. Right, oh, there definitely some I thought he was going there. after the milk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was about it, too. Because I think she he thought they were like sisters at teaching. first. I shipped it. Right. I definitely shipped it, yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, I think it's time to go into final rankings. And I think we like to save the juiciest ranking for last. Rob, who do you think, or Rich, <laughs> who do you think is going to have the juiciest take? I don't think mine's that interesting. I like, so I think it's Rich. Yeah, Rich it definitely has the best mine's... ranking. I think Rich has for last. Yeah. Rob, why don't you okay. start us off? So it's tough because as just an anime movie, I probably would have given it a B plus, But going with my expectations of it being a Shinkai movie, I have to take that down to a B minus but on top of that hang on there was no Mitsuha in this movie which instantly brings it down to a C (laughs) you're joking what do you mean there was no Mitsuha cameo there was no Mitsuha cameo but you think that this entire movie was a C so no 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 I I literally just told you it would be a B minus but we lose Mitsuha without Mitsuha it's a C so what's your final ranking I literally just told you it's a C C yeah, that's what I said. So I, what I'm saying is in the entirety of the rest of the year, this movie is a C, which is like average below average compared to all the other stuff you'll be watching. Okay, hang on, that hang seems, on, hang on. That seems extremely harsh. Let me redo this. B, B plus as an anime movie, B minus as a Shinkai movie, F without Mitsuha. <laughs> I'll give it the I'll give it the B minus. Okay. I will go next. And maybe mine's the hot take, because I'm gonna give this an A minus. Oh my god. I thought <laughs> explain yourself. <laughs> I thought the first half of the movie was genuinely excellent. The adventure, the humor. I was just having like a very joyful and charming experience up until the point where she stabs the worm thing. And even that mm-hmm. was like, oh, that feels like a nice closure to this whole situation. It's the second half that sort of bogged me down because I was like that car ride felt awkwardly placed I know it was an awkward car ride Mm -hmm. but it felt awkwardly placed and it felt like the movie was dragging past what it needed to be and then the thing with the ending being just a little bit too on the nose but I thought the first half was genuinely like I was thinking like I think this is better than this is probably my second favorite film at that point of the three like I liked it more than weathering with you up until the midpoint where it just sort of tonally shifts but I'm not gonna kill it just because i didn't love the ending I, i'm still gonna give it a solid a minus and i think shinkai films even if they're bad they're still good 
they're so beautiful to look at. But, but also, so, like, so is it better than we- weathering with you or no? Don't you dare. <laughs> it's hard it to say. It shouldn't even be a consideration, Justin. <laughs> For me, it's like weathering you with like was more uh-huh. consistent, I'd say. And then this one was like really high, high, and then like kind of mediocre, low. Is it better um, or worse? Be careful what you say. I'm processing. Mm, I don't know. I might like it slightly more, but on, I think I might like it slightly more, but I think it's a worse movie. Does that make sense? That's fair. That's completely fair. Yeah, like weathering with you, my biggest problem with it was I thought it was like an improvement on your name technically in a lot of aspects, but there was this ominous feeling throughout the movie that made me a little bit uncomfortable, and maybe that's the intention, but it wasn't a joyful experience. It was like a sad kind of uneasy feeling which isn't necessarily a bad thing but just my preferences mm-hmm. so, completely yeah. fair you you like filler movies wow i mean this was just one literally <laughs> one big wow. beautiful filler movie right i'm not uh, think about it you take it's just like fun shenanigans there's very little in the way of like real substance minus like the uh, the like tsunami references that really like hit it hit home and added like the weight and importance to it but if you if you subtract that out what is it oh, it's like a rich, road trip rich i think movie. we made it clear when he was asking all those questions that justin is pretty stupid so i think you need to be a little bit more sensitive <laughs> with him like for, so you're for us you're right this was a filler thing. movie but for justin right, this was like you know this was tough this, this was a hard thing to process <laughs> so you're saying that this was just one big beach episode uh, basically right Hot Springs <laughs> what, they, yeah. yeah they're doing a road trip they're riding a bike they're chasing a chair that's chasing a cat this is like quintessential filler. <laughs> I was not expecting to be roasted so hard by you, Rich. I was expecting this from <laughs> Rob. Rich, give me your shitty hot take. What are you giving us? Oh my gosh, I don't think it's. A, I mean, it's. I would say it's like it's a, it's a B. Like Rob said, it's like fun. It's nice. There are definitely good moments in there that you can appreciate, but, but it, it like doesn't have anything to vault it over the top. Like there's no one thing that when when someone asks like five years from now oh, what'd you think of Suzume? Like, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, like this part was great. Or like, this really stood out. It's going to, it's just going to be like, oh, Glasses Kuhn was great. And I love Glasses Kuhn. And then that's about it. Oh man. Well guys, I think that'll wrap us up with Rich and Rob's horrible takes. Uh, As always, (laughs) thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll see you guys next time. Adios. Adios. I'm not, what, what, that's it's that, like yeah. lamb chop on the bottom that and rich and then paddington 2 uh, just way at the top in terms of iconography yeah, yeah paddington 2 is first then rich then lamb chop but lamb chop is definitely okay. up there <laughs> where do i rank well Ooh. below all of that oh okay i mean that makes <laughs> sense <laughs> that's a big bar that's a high bar to clear <laughs> it's really not curious george is somewhere there no curious george is up high I like Curious George. Yeah, I'm a big he, Curious George he's, guy. He's a good one. I think it's under <laughs> Lamb Chop. He's, no, he's above Lamb Chop, I'd say. He might be above. Just like the media, you know, he he's just everywhere in media. He kind of gets the buzz. Lamb Chop is a little more low-key. <laughs> yeah, you've never even heard of Lamb Chop. <laughs> I haven't right. heard of Lamb Chop. <laughs>